Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room Channel and this is your tip of the week. This is a fat quarter pack. Now some fat quarter packs come with just four fat quarters in it. This one has five. Most of the time you'll see them have five. Sometimes you can even buy really giant packs of fat quarter. But some of the viewers have been getting confused with what's the difference between a fat quarter and a quarter of a yard. So I'm going to go over that. So here is a yard of fabric laying out. Now when you buy a yard of fabric and you unfold it, you'll have selvage edge here and here. And then you're going to have your two raw edges where it was cut off of the bolt of the fabric. If you divided your yard in half this way and this way, you're going to have 18 by 20, maybe 21 inch pieces of fabric. That is a fat quarter. Now this layout represents a half a yard of fabric. So again, if you unfold the fabric, you've got selvage edges at each end and your raw edges here. If you wanted a quarter of a yard and you went up to them and asked to, for them to cut it, they're not going to give you a fat quarter. They're going to cut from selvage edge to selvage edge with the fabric folded and they'll go over nine inches from this raw edge. So let's say you bought a fat quarter pack and you need one more piece of fabric and you go in there, you can't find a fat quarter to go with your fat quarter pack. So you find a piece of fabric that's off the bolt. If you ask for a fat quarter, they won't be able to do that. You, you will either have to get a quarter of a yard, but if you need a piece that's wider than nine inches, you will have to buy more than that quarter of a yard. My husband and I were cleaning out our closet and he was throwing away some shirts that were getting kind of raggedy and I was throwing away some jeans that were not raggedy but I kind of outgrew them just a little bit. So I decided it was time to give them away. But as I was looking at them, I liked the pockets on the front of the shirt and on the back of the pants. So what I did was I literally cut the whole front section of this shirt out. It's gone. There it is. Okay. I took the pockets out and then on the back of these jeans, I cut the entire little butt part out. So let me show you what I did with them. Now I plan on cutting more of my old pants and shirts up. You don't have to use denim. It can be plaid shirts, any kind of shirts you want that have pockets all about the same size. So you can stitch them into a quilt. So you would stitch each row together all the way across, then stitch your next row together. Once you got all your rows stitched, then you would stitch each row together. Now my squares are about eight, maybe eight and a half inches. So this is what I intend on doing with it. It makes a nice little toy storage for the kids. Now this, my husband never grew up. He still has little toys. This is one of his. And you can put them in the pockets of the quilt. So it's a fun little playtime quilt for the little kids. Now you're probably wondering, well, what did you do with the rest of those pants and the shirt that you cut up? Well, there's still a lot of good parts left on that shirt and the pants. So you could cut up your fabrics and do something called rag quilting. So what I've got here is a square of denim fabric. You can make it any size square you want. And then on the back, I have some quilting fabric. It happens to be children's fabric. And then I have one more square in the middle that's red. The red kind of goes with this red in this print right here. Now all of your squares can be different. They don't have to all be matchy-matchy. So let me show you how to stitch them together. Now here's a set of squares here and here. So there's three in each set. Now you can do more. I've 
seen people do up to six. That's a lot of cutting you need to do later. So I usually like to stick to around three, maybe four. So I've got all my squares together and I'm bringing this side against this side because I want the denim to be on the front. So you have a seam here and I made my seam a half inch wide. It all depends on the person making the quilt. Maybe you only want to do a quarter inch wide. I want to do a half inch. Then, after I've stitched it all together, you're going to do this clipping. So you've got all your squares together in each row, all your rows stitched together. And then you're going to use something called rag quilting shears. And these are incredibly sharp. This is made by Fiskars and it's got a safety latch on it. This is not something you want to leave laying around, especially if there's little children close by because they could cut their little fingers off. We don't want that to happen. So make sure that when they're not in use, you close them with a safety latch and then when you're ready to use them, undo them. So what you're going to do to all your seams is you're going to go up to, but make sure you don't cut through the stitch line. And you go maybe a quarter of an inch apart. Some people may do an eighth of an inch. I don't like to cut that much, so I only do about a quarter of an inch. So you go along all your seams. So while you're doing on this cutting, make yourself a nice cup of coffee, put on a good movie, because it'll take you some time. Now usually I have my husband do this for me. He has much stronger hands. Because I had a viewer tell me she uh, had a hard time with rag quilting because her hands got so tired. So I recommended that she use rag quilting shears. So your next step would be is to throw your quilt in the washing machine, then put it in the dryer and you're gonna keep it in the dryer for quite a while. Check the dryer every 15, 20 minutes, open it up, take out the lint trap and clean it up because you're gonna get all kinds of little pieces of thread in there. So you keep doing that till the lint trap doesn't get quite so full. So let me show you a sample of a rag quilt that's done. So here are the seams that were clipped and then washed and dried. And they fuzz up, they get real frizzy. Now this one I probably need to wash, or excuse me, put through the dryer a few more times. Now on the back is just the same color of fabric, but you could put different colors all over the back. It doesn't have to be matchy matchy. Now this is a small baby size rag quilt. In this, a particular tutorial that I have, I don't cut squares. I have a completely different technique for getting all these stitched together without having to do squares. I also have a denim long strip quilt that's a rag quilt. I'm going to have those links below your YouTube screen. So review that technique of folding and cutting. It's very, very quick. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tip of the week and that you've learned something new. I hope I've inspired you to try some of these things that I have shown you. Now, if you're interested in other sewing tips of the week, I have a lot of them. You want to scroll down to the description section and click on the little down arrow or the words that says show more and you will see links appearing. My tips of the week come out every week on Wednesdays. I also have cross stitch tips that come out twice a month about every other week. So make sure you check those videos out. I'll also have links to other beginners sewing projects. And by the way, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time and happy sewing. If you like the Sewing Room channel, one of the 
best ways to show your support is to subscribe by clicking on that red subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And make sure you click on the bell so you receive notifications for all my new videos. I'm Cheryl, this is Manny, and this is Scotty. See you next time.